Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Chick-fil-A fast food restaurant with a drive-thru. Welcome once again, my chicken lovers. If you do enjoy this tutorial and you want to see more, I would highly recommend subscribing to the channel and clicking the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll make sure that you get to keep up to date with all of these builds that I'm putting out on the channel for you. I've been loving the city build process, guys. I've been loving making all of these city builds, and I hope that you guys have been enjoying them as well. And a side note, if you do want to see what the inside of the Chick-fil-A looks like, you'll have to wait until the end of the video because I will show you how to make absolutely everything that you see and what you don't even see. How mysterious. But without any further ado, let's get started. Now, before we begin building, ladies and gentlemen, as always, this tutorial is going to be split into two parts. The first part of this tutorial will focus on the outside building and require all of these materials that you can conveniently see on the screen right now. Please make sure that you can gather all of those and enough of those as well, as that is what we are going to be starting off with. But I always like to give you guys a heads up. Later on, when we work our way into Chick fil A, then you are going to need all of these separate materials that you can now see on the screen right now. And of course, you will be able to see how many you will need to. You don't have to grab those now, I will be showing you them again later, but I know that some of you guys like to be prepared, and I do too. So, Please make sure that you can gather all of those. Chick-fil-A requires a 29 by 34 block area to make. It actually doesn't require this much space if you are not bothered about the drive through and the fancy area in front of the building, so you will have to tailor this to your own demands. But if you are planning out a city, I would highly recommend building this grid in your world. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to, gather all those materials, make sure you've got enough room to make it, make sure that you're ready to feast on delicious chicken sandwiches, and once you're ready, we can begin. Okay, so step one, chicken friends, we are going to come all the way to the front left-hand corner of our grid. We're then going to count right by one, two, three, and four, and then inwards by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the starting position if you are building inside the grid. If not, well, this is where we start. Place a brick on the ground. Place a black concrete right of the brick and place three on top. One, two, three. Go right also by three. One, two, three. Connect down to the ground. Place a brick right of the block on the ground and extend it right by an additional one. Place a brick in front of this and go right by two. One, two. Place a brick in front of this and go right by four. One, two, three, four. Place a brick inwards and then two to the right. Place a brick inwards and only one to the right. Place a black concrete and three on top. One, two, three. We are then going to go right by the same. One, two, three. And we're going to join down to the ground. We want to take the block on the ground and place a brick to the right of it. Make sure that the shape that we have just made is nice and symmetrical. Perfect. I love how that looks. We are going to continue building around our chick fillet. So, beginning from the end position, which is this brick here, we are going to place, going backwards from it, a black concrete. With three on top. One, two, three. Go right by three. One, two, three. And join down to the ground. On the ground, place three brick blocks coming back. One, two, three. With a black concrete right of that. And then three on top. Go right by three, and go down to the ground. Place three brick blocks going back. One, two, three. Place a black concrete with three on top, and then go right by three as well. One, two, three. And join down to the ground. We are then going to place a single brick block just on the back here of the end of the window. 
and all we're going to do now is flip over to the opposite side of the build and do the exact same thing. So on this opposite side, beginning from the very first brick block that we ever placed, ha, huh, I'm so nostalgic, the first brick block, uh, <laughs> it grows up so fast. Next to this, we're going to place a black concrete with three on top. One, two, three. And by the way, we are just copying what we have over there. Go left by three, one, two, three, and then join down to the ground. Place three bricks coming backwards from the ground, one, two, three, and then black concrete with three on top. Go backwards by three, join down to the ground, place three bricks in between, one, two, three, with a black concrete, three on top, go backwards by the same amount, join down to the ground, and then place a brick block. It's the exact same pattern that we've done once already, that's why we did it a little bit faster. On the back of your Chick-fil-A, you may feel the need to add detail. I do not. We're going to connect the back two corners of the build together with a hefty row of bricks. We are going to place five whole rows of birchwood planks. One, two, three, four, five. Just built directly on top of all of these bricks. And this is actually going to set a little bit of a standard for the sides of the builds as well, and to a lesser degree, the front of the build also. You see, now that we have added those five layers of birchwood planks, and they look great, we want to extend these planks forwards. And all that means is I want you to fill in between all of the windows on both sides of your Chick-fil-A. And even coming as far as the front here as well. I want you to build up birchwood planks in between the windows and up as high as the row of birchwood planks on the back. And it is as easy as that. We will also, whilst we are on the sides as well, probably add in all of the additional details that are required to build the side of your Chick-fil-A. There's some cool things that we're going to be adding that really sets it apart from some other fast food restaurants. So, we want to have something which should look exactly like that, and that looks pretty good. Okay, so on the sides of the build, and we're going to do this to both sides, so don't worry about it, I want you to fill in the windows. The first two windows on the right side specifically are going to just be glass, whether that's glass block or glass pane, that is completely up to you. I like pane. Not literally, but I like the glass pane. On the back window, however, it's a drive-through window, so I'm going to seal up the bottom using a bit of bricks, and then I'm going to cover one half of the window in glass. So, just to separate it from the rest of them, that's pretty much all we're doing. Now, above the windows, we have what can only be described as canopies, and it actually, not Caterpie, not the Pokemon, canopies. Well, that, that failed miserably. The white and red concretes will actually be better suited together. And above every single window, we're actually going to do this, right? We want a pattern. We want to place red concrete, white concrete, red concrete, white concrete, or white concrete, red concrete, white concrete, red. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, as long as you place them going above the width of the window. And then all you would do is extend the width of the window, the canopies above the window, one row upwards and one row outwards. That's all you got to do. And then you've got some fancy canopies. Again, not Caterpie. Nothing against Caterpies. I love them. They're adorable little caterpillar Pokemon. But we're looking for canopies. There we go. Perfect. That's all you have to do up with the windows. And it, it looks nice that way. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Now, on this opposite side, you do have a choice as well when it comes to the windows. Except for the first two. Those are glass. So I'm filling the first two in with glass. I would recommend doing the same. Or don't. It's completely up to you. Feel free to modify this build. However, this window back here, you can have a window, which is what I, I would usually do. Or you could have a little bit of... I, I put these on quite a lot of fast food restaurants. You could have... Uh, kind of like a little order menu. You, you know when you go for a drive through or whatever, or sometimes if you're just walking around a fast food restaurant in general, they'll have like, oh, the, the McRib is on offer. I wish the McRib was back. But, like, you can get a double cheeseburger for $5, and it's got a little picture and stuff. Like, you can use this for a, an advertising window if you like. Or just turn it into glass. I like glass myself, because it's quite nice and bright inside. I like the modern sort of vibe. But you do what you want to do. And, of course, what are we going to do above here? Well... 
above every single window, we are going to add those canopies. You can even alternate if you like. You know how we went like red and white on the other side instead of white and red? Well, feel free to change it around just for a little bit of change. Or don't. Again, this is your build. You do what you will. You can, e you can literally modify this building in so many different ways. It's really completely your design at the end of the day. So this is what we should end up with. We have the back. We have the sides. Don't sound a lot like a haircut. And we just have to do the front. So on the front of the build, we're going to focus on building up the build first before we start adding minor details. Minor? As in, as in mine? Minecraft? Okay, so on this row of five bricks that we have right in the front middle part of the building, we are going to, on the left and right one, place five black concretes coming up from the bricks. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. We are going to place, in between them, two rows of glass. So that'll be one row of glass, and then eh, two rows of glass. Black concrete in between, with two rows of glass on top. So it's going to be one, and then two. Perfect. I then want you to place red concrete on top of this, and then four rows of birch planks. So one, two, three, four. Perfect. Just like that. Coming up from the red concrete. There we are. Now, I want you to place a single birch plank in the middle, red concrete either side, and a singular red concrete on top. There we are. And whilst we are up here, I do want to outline the roof design. So, place a stone brick slab going left of the upper red concrete block here. Extend the stone brick slab towards you, and then right, up, right, up, right, up. Take the block underneath and go right, down, right, down, right, just like that. And that's perfect. That's all you have to do. We'll be working on the rest of it a little bit later. Okay, so here's the deal here. I want you to behind or on top of these brick blocks. What I mean by these ones. These brick blocks here, specifically these ones, none of the others, and this is the same on the opposite side, right? On top of these brick blocks, I want you to add brick blocks on top of these rows of bricks until it comes as high as the black concrete of the window. Like, it's kind of hard to describe, but basically the immediate brick blocks just left of the black window in the middle, you want to raise them up as high as the black window itself, which is in the middle and quite difficult to not see. So, bricks up this high. Okay, perfect. What I then want you to do is I want you to extend upwards the brick blocks to the left of this, and I want you to place birchwood planks above the other windows, the side windows, if you will, the least important ones. So, birchwood planks here. It's very specific. You, you don't want to mess this part up because it's, uh, it's kind of like an integral part of the design. So, you can see which blocks want to be bricks and which blocks do not want to be bricks. And that's their choice. What we are now going to do, however, and this is tricky, we are going to place birchwood stairs on top of the entire building. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do, actually. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to place red concrete coming inwards from these bricks on both sides, right? And then we're going to place upside down birch wood stairs coming around the entire top of the build. And this is actually a nice little bit of separation because, you see, everything above the upside down birch wood stairs is kind of like a roofing area like it's kind of separate it's it looks nice because it's distance from the lower half of the restaurant which is where you would be walking in and around it's it's kind of weird to explain but like it it, it kind of uh, it separates things nicely basically the lower and upper half and now that we've done that we are going to add on top of these inner three birchwood stairs we're going to add Three rows of birchwood planks on top of these inner birchwood stairs. Only this row of three right here. And we're going to stick a row of red concrete on top of the birch like this. That's perfect. 
And then on top of the rest of the birchwood stairs, we are going to add two rows. So we've got this layered design, so to speak. So you can see on top of all of the other birchwood stairs, we will have only two rows. So it's kind of coming up towards the center. It's quite a unique shape, which is what I like about this. The only downside to this is to actually get like a nice shape and to be able to make the sign and to be able to actually really get the design that I wanted. I did have to make the restaurant probably a little bit bigger than I actually wanted to. But I think it is worth it to distinguish itself from the rest of them. We're also going to place red concrete on top of those rows of birch wood. So the red concrete on top of the birch wood will be just fine like this and we'll even be adding a little bit of a roof and stuff to that well i guess maybe we can even add that now i guess so now that we have this sort of setup right here and you know it's looking pretty decent the idea here is that we want to have stone brick slabs in front of the top halves of the red concrete areas okay so just like this we are going to have stone brick slabs go around the red concrete. Now, this only gets tricky because of the sort of layered part of the middle of the build. So, like, the lower half of the build's no problem, it all connects together, but with this upper half, we're going to have to extend it backwards a little bit so it doesn't look funny. So, what we're going to do, behind each one of these red concretes, we're going to add another row of red. Let's call it a row of what shall we add a row of five something like that like one two three four five like that and then one two three four five like that and we're just going to join it together and we're going to add the same shape that we have on the front of the building onto the back although you don't have to add the birch wood and we're also going to just connect the two middle parts together here because that's quite important otherwise it'll look a bit funny as well and you're going to want to fill these top two sections in. I'll, I'll give you an overview of what this looks like in just a moment. There we are. Perfect. Just like this. And then what you can do from here is you can add the stone brick slabs around the top just like this. This is perfect. Just like that. Whoa. There we go. And then you can make the same shape that you did on the front using these stone brick slabs. Now, it won't look as impressive as the front of the build because it doesn't really have to. Nobody's going to be seeing this unless they're from a very elevated position. And even so, it looks all right anyway. But we did want to add, we, we wanted to make it 3D for a reason. And I'll show you that reason once we hit the floor. Because it's, it's just going to look better. That's pretty much all there is to it. But once we connect this front and back, and once we've added a nice, a nice actual proper, like, solid ceiling inside of the build, which is very, very important. There we go. You'll be able to see... Is, doesn't that look better? Like, especially from the side, you can see how it keeps going back. It's, it's not flat. That's the entire point of what we've just done there. Now, adding a roof to this thing couldn't be any simpler. You can add any colour. I reckon I'm going to do black. So, the black is going to sit one row below the actual red concrete, just as to provide a little bit of contrast. And all you'll have to do, and this is the, this is the roof, by the way. The ceiling on the inside is completely different. The ceiling on the inside is going to be so much lower than this. Like, it doesn't matter what colour you make the roof, except for you. You know, like it's completely up to, like it, as long as you're happy with the colour of the roof, it doesn't matter. But we will be installing a separate ceiling uh, when we get to that part. And we'll probably do it a little bit later on because we have the materials that we need. We don't actually need any other materials to do the interior floor and the interior ceiling. So we'll take advantage of the fact that we've actually got the materials and uh, we won't waste our time doing it in the interior tutorial, which is... I, I guess separate, but still in this video, but you'll see anyway. So now that we've had a ceiling, and by the way, that looks cool, right? We've got a, quite a few colours going on here. I'd recommend just connecting the red concrete down like this. So the middle concrete, just connect it down, red concrete, nice like that. So we've got no gaps, we've got no holes in this build. It's bulletproof. So we want to have something which should look like that. So far, it looks nice and fancy. 
there's only a couple of things that we have to do from this point onwards. So first of all, we have a window here on the right that's going to be filled in using glass pane. We're going to add a canopy above the window. You guys know how these function. It's the same as what we added on the sides in the exact same manner. And for some reason, I keep placing red and white. So that's what we're going for. You want the same thing above the main entrance here. And this is the main entrance, by the way, this door on the left. You could easily swap it over the, to that door on the right or have a side entrance on the side. Although you might get run over because that's where the drive through is going. <laughs> okay. So now that we've reached this point right here, well, I'm also going to add a little bit of black glass just above the main entrance. And we'll add a door and stuff a little bit later on because we're actually going to be replacing the floor and what have you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much almost your bog standard Chick-fil-A. And what I mean by that is, really, this is the building almost very much complete. If you wanted to, you could leave it here. We will do the sign. But you could leave it after we've done the sign here. But, so now, the last thing that we're going to do before we add all of the optional extras is we have to write Chick-fil-A on the outside of the building, which is not my favourite thing to do, as you guys know. It's actually one of my least favourite things to do in Minecraft is make banners, but I do it for you guys because I love you. So, the first thing that we're going to do in writing Chick-fil-A is that we have to chuck out a crafting table down onto the ground. So... I'm going to get rid of that crafting table now. I'm going to open the crafting table, crack it open, and we are going to start... We only have one banner. That is not going to do. You actually... You need quite a few banners. I think you need eight of them in total, if not ten. We'll, just, we'll, we'll come across this later. It'll be in the item list, but I'm just going to grab a load of them anyway. So, here we are. We are going to start with C. Place a white banner in the center of the table with red dye along the bottom of the banner. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with red dye coming along the left side of the banner top to bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with red dye coming across the top of the banner. Grab the new banner, that is your C. However, this is a chunky C. The difference between chunky letters and non-chunky letters can be displayed here next to the bakery and the dominoes. The bakery has chunky letters and the dominoes has nice outline defined letters. These are these look better depending on the situation. I am looking more towards the dominoes letters, which means every time you create a letter with your banners, all we're going to do to finish it off is use white dye all the way around it. You might find that you like the other style, you might like chunky letters. Do that. If you prefer chunky, do the chunky. Chunky but funky as, as, well, I don't say that, but people do. So now we have C. C can be placed in two different places, so you're going to need two of these. First of all, up on the top front left-hand corner of the front display of the building. You then want to leave a gap of two going right and place an additional C like this. So make sure that you have two of those. Feel free to pause if necessary. Next, we have to make H. We begin by placing a white banner in the center of the table with red dye coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with red dye coming up the right side. Grab the new banner and place it in the top middle of the table with red dye coming along the middle. Grab the new banner H is done if you like chunky letters, I'm not going to keep repeating myself, but if you want the nice slim slender letters, then place white dye all the way around. You only need one H and it is to be placed next to the very first C. We now have to make I, my favourite letter to make because it's the easiest. White banner middle left of the table, red dye right in the middle going top to bottom, and then if you like you can place the white dye going all the way around the outside of the banner, which will give you your nice completed I. And you will need two of these. One is placed next to the H in between the C's, and the other is placed underneath the H as well, like this. It's surrounded. I'm going to crack open the banner, and now we are going to make K. So, white banner in the middle of the table, with red dye coming up the left side. Grab the new banner, and place it in the middle of the table, with red dye, bottom left corner, to top right. Grab the new banner, place it in the middle left of the table, with red dye, top left corner, to bottom right corner. 
There we go. Grab the new banner. That is your K. However, do feel free to add white dye around it if you like. And there we have the Kellogg's Corn Flakes logo. <laughs> Place it on the end of the first row. We now have to make F, which also isn't a bad one to make. White banner in the middle of the table with red dye coming up the left side. Grab the new banner, place it in the middle of the table with red dye coming along the top. New banner, place it in the middle top of the table with red dye coming along the middle. Grab the new banner, that is actually done, but if you like, you can place the white dye. There we go. Now we have F. F is to be placed just left of the eye on the lower part of your chick fillet. Now we have to make L. Place a white banner in the center of the table with red dye coming top to bottom. Grab the new banner once more, place it in the center of the table, also not a bad one to make, red dye coming along the bottom of the banner. That is L complete, however do feel free to, as usual, add the white dye if you so choose. There we go, nice. Which will be placed next to here, perfect. Now this next banner is actually, it's kind of a simple one, but it's, it's you know, you've, you've got to put a bit of work into it. Place a white banner right in the bottom middle of the table with red dye coming across the middle. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with, <laughs> with white dye coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white dye coming up the right side. Easy. Grab the new banner, that's it, and that's just like the the dash, the period, whatever, whatever you want to call it, the little split between the fill and ah. So now we just have to make ah, which is white banner in the middle of the table, red dye coming up the left, new banner, place it in the middle of the table, right dye coming up or down the right, grab the new banner, place it in the middle of the table, red dye coming along the top, Grab the new banner, place it in the top middle of the table with red dye coming along the middle. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white dye going all the way around. And that is your A perfect, or the chick fila. Fila? A. Anyway, that is your sign complete. Nice and simple. So now that you have completed your sign, I would, in the event of a catastrophe, such as, I don't know, earthquake, a sudden electrical storm, I would put these banners nice and safe in a box, just until you're sure you're not going to need them anymore. I'd even put the boxes in the box, just like that. Now that we have done this, we can focus work a little bit more on the outside. So, if you like, you can leave it like this. If you have your plans to make your Chick-fil-A, if you want to integrate it into a city and you don't want a drive through or if you don't want a path going outside, feel free to adjust things for yourself. But, just to round off the build, make it look a little bit nicer for myself, I am going to add a drive through and I'm going to add a little bit of stuff outside. So, feel free to skip this part if you like, but some of you might find this useful. Okay, so we're going to need, first of all, some smooth stone, some oak leaves, some grey concrete, some lime terracotta. We'll need some white concrete. We'll need these stone brick slabs for a part that I forgot earlier. We'll even need doors as well. And here, I like the dark oak wood doors with this colour scheme. Okay, we might, we might need other stuff, but we'll grab it later. So, first of all, the things that I forgot, stone brick slabs. I want to place them above the middle of the windows slash door on the left and right side of the build in these two positions. I don't know why it just makes it look a little bit fancier. It kind of looks like lighting of some sort or something. Well, not lighting, but it could be. Now that we have done that, we are going to begin by making a walkway from the entrance. These are the double doors. I'm going to knock out two rows between the double doors leading all the way to the outline. So, I want to have a smooth stone entranceway, like this, leading from the front entrance outwards. And that'd connect to a street, or a, you know, a, a road or something, you know. That's the point of the path. I use dark, I use two dark oak wood doors because I quite like how that looks with the rest of the colour scheme. Left of the pathway, I'm going to place two rows of lime terracotta. Just because it kind of goes. You could even use flowers or something like that if you liked to perk the place up a bit. 
right of this, I'm also going to place some lime terracotta as well. Two rows, like so. Around the front windows, we are going to place oak leaves, and they're just going to sit nicely in front of the bricks, including the two sets of two on the left and right. We're now going to dig in front of the hedge, and we're going to place just one row of lime terracotta in front of the hedge, like this. We are going to dig out all of this empty space, all of this, and we are going to place car park spaces inside. Now these are very easy to make. My cars typically are three rows wide. I feel free to make your spaces a bit different. Going along the right side of the grass path, place a row of white concrete. Three rows of grey, a row of white, three rows of grey, and then another row of white, just like that. So we've kind of fast-forwarded the process a little bit, but you guys get the idea. That's what we want to have, just like this. And these are going to be car parking spaces for those people that have cars. We're also going to add an additional car parking space, although it's a little bit clumsy. I, I don't know, but let's see if we can just deal with two. Let's see how it looks, actually. So I'm actually going to dig out all of this area out in front all of this, and I'm going to replace it with lime terracotta. I think the build might actually look a little better with just two spaces. It might look a little bit more balanced. I, I had originally planned to place a little bit of path or something here, but um, I reckon some grass might look a little bit better. Just have two spaces, and then that way it is more symmetrical. If you're not bothered about symmetricality, which isn't even a word, unless it is, it might be, it doesn't sound like one, then you might want to just add a little bit of, uh, of grass in there instead, and that doesn't look too bad. What I'm also going to do is dig three rows around the entire Chick-fil-A. One, two, three, like that. I want to dig three entire rows around the Chick-fil-A. As I mentioned, my cars are about three rows wide. So if you typically make cars that are four rows wide, five rows, whatever style of car you want to make, if you want to make it so that vans and trucks and larger vehicles can get around here, fire state and fire engines, I guess. I don't know, then feel free to add all of these. So, we're just going to place, dig out all of this, and place ourselves some grey concrete inside of these three rows of exposed area. Because you see, I'm gearing up to have grey concrete as a flooring material. I guess I actually dug one row more around for my Chick-fil-A than I needed, which is perfectly fine. You can see I've got like an extra row. We'll sort that out later, but that doesn't stop the fact that we're going to have just three rows of grey concrete circulating at uh, the Chick-fil-A. I just added an extra row on the back there, it would seem, but that's perfectly fine. We can sort that out when we get to it. So... The reason that I'm using grey concrete, as I said, is because that's what I want to use as a road material. Other candidates include light grey concrete, cyan terracotta, uh, stone, any sort of grey concrete will do, or black, by the way. Black concrete would actually be a fine addition as a road. Now that we've done that, we are actually going to need the bricks as well. We're going to place a brick wall all the way around like this so brick wall all the way around and what i also want you to do is i want you to place bricks oh no i just messed that up didn't i i uh, i only i want the brick wall here there we go so on the corners of the brick wall i guess we'll just add it in later i want you to extend each corner upwards and place here i want you to extend each corner upwards like this and we're going to place oak leaves in between the two corners so it's a little bit of a different um sort of like the vibe this place gives off like we've got a bit of a higher wall and it's a two-tone material usually i just put hedges and stuff around these but i wanted to make this a little bit different because it is quite a different style so here and um, there you go so now you can see it actually looks quite fancy going all the way around and i believe that that's it that's all you have to do for the outside of your Chick-fil-A, if you like. That looks pretty good. I, I don't think anybody's going to mistake what this building actually is. And now that we have done that, ladies and gentlemen, is this the tallest fast food building? No, Pizza Hut by far is taller. But, uh, yeah, the last thing that we're going to do before we move on to the actual interior tutorial is I want to dig up 
the floor, and I want to add in a ceiling. So the floor is going to be stone or smooth stone. And by the way, I'm just digging out underneath all of the windows here. And I'm placing black concrete underneath all of the windows because it looks nicer that way. So, as I mentioned, the floor is to be dug out and replaced with a different material. It doesn't have to be smooth stone. I just like smooth stone as a floor material for quite a lot of shops and quite a lot of places. I, I don't know why, it just works for me. I'm especially more intrigued to do it if I use it as the path material as well, which we did for Chick-fil-A, so I don't know. I, I just kind of like it a little bit better. There's many different materials that you can use for floors, however. You could feel free to use some iron blocks, that's another one that I like for some reason. You could feel free to use different types of woods. You could use oak wood, or I guess in this case you could use birch, although it might be a little bit bright, I don't know, it's completely up to you. You could use black concrete if you... I wouldn't use black concrete, that'd be really, 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 really dark. But you could though, I mean there's no reason you couldn't. You could even use red concrete if you liked. It's completely up to you. But, it's quite a large area inside of here. I probably should have made this place a little bit smaller, but I kind of had, uh, I really liked how it was turning out. And all you do, once you have destroyed all of the grass, you obviously place whatever material it is you want as a floor material. And in doing this, we are actually going to be able to skip out on a little bit of the interior tutorial. So in doing it this way, you know, it's a little bit faster than like having to gather the smooth stone again and having to gather... I'm going to be using white concrete for the ceiling. So it, uh, it just makes it so that we can immediately install the interior uh, as opposed to having to do a lot of busy work, which is what I would consider this as quite a bit of busy work to do beforehand. We are going to have to install the lighting though, because we don't have any lights on us. That's also going to be a personal choice as well, but I'll, I'll, I'll go over that once we have actually installed the floor. Such a huge area, it really is. I am I am starting to wonder whether I, I could have made this any smaller, but I, d I don't think I could have, to be honest. Like, uh, I think it would have looked a little bit weird if I would have made it a bit smaller, but it's still like a, a, a normalish sort of size for a fast food place. So the ceiling, I have decided it to be white concrete to make it bright, nice and bright. The white concrete is going to sit above where the black concrete is horizontal above every single one of the windows. If you want a different ceiling, I don't know what to suggest. I mean, red concrete might work because it kind of fits. Black concrete could work. Uh, but again, black concrete is such a dark material, I don't know whether you'd want to use it. You could use bricks for a ceiling. Hey, that's possible. Your bricks wouldn't be too bad. And then you could perhaps incorporate some slabs and stuff as well to kind of like outline where some of the lighting is. But that's a, that's a personal choice. I mean, you could use quartz, you could use quartz slabs. You, you know, there's so many different ones. But I'm just using the uh, white concrete because I think that... Uh, it just works a little bit better. It contrasts nicely against the black of the windows and against all of the other things. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the floor, nice and complete. That is smooth stone. The ceiling is white concrete. Now we are able to actually build the inside of Chick fill a we're able to add all of the details and as you guys know that requires a whole different set of materials it actually requires all of these materials that i'm showing you on the screen right now please gather all of those interior materials once you have got them all we can get started and that's exactly what i'm going to do right now small cup so that I can grab all the stuff. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I have gathered all of the materials that we are going to need to make the inside of our Chick-fil-A. I hope that you guys have as well. Please pause the video if you have to. Do make sure that you have all of the things that you will have seen on the item list just previously before. And once you're ready, we can get started. So the first thing that we have to do is, of course, head inside. Now, the ceiling lights that I'm going to use is, I'm going to use some redstone lamps and a way to power them. I'm just using blocks of redstone for this. The most important thing is we have to figure out where to place ceiling lights, no matter what material you're using. A good way to do this is I kind of want to find where these windows here converge. So this is the front entrance, right? The edge of the entrance, I'm lining it up with the windows. If that makes sense. So like here, 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 
here, and here. Does that make sense? Like where all of the windows are. I might even leave that one out, this one right at the back. I, I probably will leave that. I, I might leave it in, I don't know, we'll see. And I want to do the same thing on the opposite side. So like where these windows converge, where they meet at a 90 degree angle. Here, 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 here. No, I, I'm not going to have that one. That doesn't make any sense. I'll cover that up later. And I'm also going to do a similar thing. So between where we have the two gaps that we've made on the left and right hand side, I'm also going to choose here and here to have lighting as well. It's a little bit arbitrary, a little bit not. So the way that I figured out was like where the edge of these windows are here. Like I'm lining the lighting up with the windows. In doing this, it keeps the lighting inside of the restaurant nice and balanced. You can see what I mean. So, barring that weird one over there, which we will take care of, we'll actually escape out of that hole. I'm going to place block of redstone. Ah, I might just throw it everywhere. I'm going to place block of redstone above all of these holes like this. If you want a different way to light up the lights, feel free to use it. It, uh, it really doesn't matter. You could even make like a switch and everything if you wanted to. That might actually be all right. Yeah, so I escaped out of that hole, that's fine. And then all I have to do, of course, is install all of these redstone lamps. So, all the way here. And it'll keep the restaurant nice and bright. Now, that doesn't mean that we aren't going to be adding additional lighting, because we will be on the walls and stuff. We're actually using the uh, the awesome new... I don't actually know what they're called. Are they just called lanterns? We'll find out a little bit later on. They have been bugged as of recent. They were called sea lanterns, which is, which is wrong. I'm talking about... These bad boys. Yeah, it's called a sea lantern, but it's not actually a sea lantern. I guess it's just a regular lantern, but oh well. So now that you have some lights inside your Chick-fil-A, we're going to start all the way at the back here, this back left-hand corner, right? And what we're going to do here is that we're going to place a double chest in this back corner coming across the back of the build. We're then going to place one, two, three, four, five red concretes, and then another double chest. We're going to place a black concrete right of this chest, and we are going to extend it forwards by one, two, three, four, five. And you're going to want to leave a gap in here somewhere as well. Connect this all the way over to the right wall here, and then coming along this back space, we're going to have this pattern of blocks. So we're going to leave two gaps, place a black concrete, leave a gap, black concrete, leave two gaps, Place two black concrete. On top of those last two black concrete, feel free to add a double chest like this. Above where you have the two double wide gaps, place quartz stairs touching the ceiling like this. That looks pretty good. We also want to have cash registers on the front row here. So where you place these, I kind of like them even. I'm going to place one here and one here. The way that I'm lining them up, I'm, I'm lining them up with the inside... Actually, I'm not. I'm not lining them up with anything, am I? So, if, if I place one here, I want to line them up with these stairs, these inside pair of stairs, just to keep it kind of, like, balanced a little bit. I guess it's also kind of where the lights are as well, which kind of works out nicely. And if you like, behind the counter space, feel free to add some more chests and stuff if you feel the need to. Keep food in it and, you know, all that sort of fun stuff. You can even add a couple of white pressure plates strewn about the place if you so choose. Additionally, what we're going to do is we're going to add a lot of seats and separations and stuff around Chick-fil-A. So one of these is right next to the entrance. So what I want you to do is take this brick block here... Not this one next to the entrance, this one right here, and I want you to place nine brick blocks coming backwards. At least I think it's nine. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That should be enough. We'll extend it if we have to, and we're just going to place two rows of oak fence on top of this. So all this means is that this area is a little bit private from this one as we walk in. So let's place some tables and stuff before we uh, before we get too crazy. So the tables, I'm lining up with these windows here, right? I'm going to take these two insides of the windows and I'm going to place two rows of two red concrete blocks coming out from the windows. I'm going to place quartz stairs on the insides here with oak fence on top with weighted pressure plates on top of the oak fence like this. And quite oftentimes, I'm going to use the... <laughs> 
sea lanterns. I'm going to use the actual lanterns and I'm going to place it just above the table to light it up a little bit. And this isn't the only place that I want one of these. So, like, I, I could even have another one here, a whole size one. So, one, two, one, two, and then stairs, like this, and then double table, and then pressure plates. You don't even have to have, like, a double table if you don't want to. You could have a single table and, like, a pot of plant or something on the end. But that looks fine. What else do we want? Well, we want more tables, like, in this area especially. It's quite a large restaurant to fill up. So, again, we're going to use this sort of seating technique over here. And this time, we're only going to have a single table. Do we need... Yeah, we'll have a single table. So, we're going to have just one red concrete coming out from each one of the windows with quartz stairs coming outwards, oak fence, weighted pressure plate on top, with a sea lantern above. So, just one. And then we're going to leave a gap of two in the ground. And then we're going to have another double table coming across so you've got a single table and then you've got like a double table here that's in the same sort of design like that just leaving a gap of one that's all you've got to do i don't know whether i want to we will probably play some potter plants and stuff around this area too a little bit later on so i kind of want a different sort of table set up around here uh, i'm going to place quartz stairs here and here now the significance of this is it's where the ends of the windows are and it leaves a gap to walk around the chairs and i'm going to place two rows of red concrete in front of the stairs and i'm going to extend it outwards by one row on both sides and i'm going to place a set of stairs on the opposite side like that just to form a table see that looks pretty decent doesn't it that doesn't look too bad at all I'm just going to have a rug in this section here. Like, we could have more tables, but I actually, I'm, I'm just going to add, like, rugs and stuff in this particular section. So, what else can we do with the materials that we have? Honestly, not too much. But what we could do is perhaps add a little bit of additional lighting, like here and here. That doesn't look too bad, I don't think. What we could even do is knock out these bricks here, next to the window. And uh, we could add some potted plants so red glazed terracotta with oak leaves on top kind of fits the theme of the restaurant a little bit and it looks a little bit nicer you can add this all over the place it's a simple uh design decoration so like in that corner there would be fine for instance you could even add like one here just on the edge of this area to spruce it up a little bit and there's not many more places that you would probably add them but you know in those few select places it looks all right doesn't it, it looks quite cozy and nice in here i quite like it i'd eat here ID here. Anyway, so that was creepy, wasn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the white carpet, the red carpet, and I'm also going to grab, although this won't be in your material list, I'm also going to grab the white concrete just to fill in this gap there because it's driving me crazy on the inside. So I'm going to add in front of the, you know, like where people would work, the working area where you'd go to pay, where they cook the food, all that fun stuff. I'm just going to add a two-tone alternating white-red rug slash carpet in front of this area uh, just to uh, kind of like conform with the colors and to make the area nice and bright that's all it is so kind of lead you over here oh can i have a chicken sandwich please why well yes sir you can and you know you guys get the idea so i'm also in this space in between these two sets of chairs and tables i'm also going to add an alternating rug here i don't really want it to touch anything is the only thing like i don't want it to physically touch the other rug or any of the chairs or anything like that but it's a good place for one like unless you wanted to put another table then you could feel free but i like that a bit better like isn't that a nice cozy eating area i certainly think it is and additionally we're going to have a rug around here so again we don't really want it to touch anything so it's just going to be one row away from well everything just one row away from everything like that and then you fill in the red uh, the red carpet and it just it, it, it just keeps things nice and bright like i like the smooth stone but i like color better there we go so that doesn't look too bad does it it looks nice and bright and interesting in here well the next thing that we're gonna do I'm gonna dump that um we're going to start adding a few more details and we need brewing stands we need flower pots we need furnaces cauldrons iron trap doors paintings mm, weight and pressure plates maybe and nothing else might even use some sea lanterns and if you wanted to you could use some item frames i'll show you why so first of all along this back wall where we have all of these red concretes i am going to add brewing stands 
So I can't remember how I laid these out. There we go. So we're going to add a brewing stand on the middle and left blocks with flower pots in between. So people can get drinks or whatever. It's just a nice little feature. I li also like to add paintings above where these chests are as well. I, it, it just adds a little bit of color. That's all there is to it. Underneath where we have what I would call extractor fans, we have cooking devices, aka furnaces. In between this area, we have cauldrons, or a cauldron with a trap door. That's kind of like a fryer. You can place some weighted pressure plates left and right of the cauldron because it just looks a little bit nicer. You can place item frames above these chests here, and maybe even above this serving area. Maybe even there as well to display what's on offer. It's pretty much just chicken, I think, but I mean, you could put potatoes in there and stuff as well. I, I, we don't have a Chick-fil-A, to my knowledge, in Britain, so I, you know, put what, what you want in the item frames. Well, what else can we add from this point onwards? Well, you could add, I mean, where can we add one? Like here, for instance, like you could add another painting. I want it to be a single painting. Like, no, not that one, not that one. I have one in my head. That's fine, actually. That one will do. That looks quite good. And where else can we have one? Nowhere else? I guess just one single painting there would look fine. I mean, the entire restaurant looks pretty good at this point. And the only thing that you might want to add, perhaps, is, as I mentioned, a bit of chicken or if if there are other things i mean you can use bread as well and well you look different baked potato i guess maybe even dessert i can you get any sort of desserts from here i don't know like i said i i don't know uh and you can put like cooked chicken and bread and cakes and probably like a double chicken here something just to keep it nice and bright that's that's all you gotta do but it's quite a chilled out interior it's, it's one of my more favorite ones it's very very chilled out indeed and, uh, yeah, guys, that's it. That's the, actually the entire inside of your Chick-fil-A complete. That's the entire outside. The last thing that I'm going to do is show you the entire place all nice and done together. Why don't we do that? How does that sound? Good? Perfect. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Chick-fil-A. This is what it should look like once it has been 100% fully completed. We have a nice polished exterior with plenty of details and room for customization. We have a drive through we have a very consistent color scheme and building scheme. It looks great out here. On the inside, we have a very nice and cozy interior accessible through these double doors. You can see that we have plenty of seating areas, which again, the lanterns make it so nice and cozy in here. The lighting feels almost a little bit moody. The colors are really nice and work well together. We have logical places to eat and to get drinks and to hang out and chill out. And we have places to, of course, order our food and pay. And we have chests, we have a drive through We have absolutely everything that you would expect inside of a fast food restaurant like Chick-fil-A. And that's it. I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed making and designing this, especially because it's something I'm not familiar with and because it's a little bit different. Very, very fun to design and make. If you have enjoyed this tutorial for yourself, please remember to hit that like button as it helps me and the channel out so, 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 so much, guys. It really does. It's incredibly helpful. I cannot explain to you how much it really is. If you would like to stick around and see what I'm going to be building in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell next to the subscription button. But I ensure that y'all must have sent directly to your sub box. And if you have any suggestions for future builds, leave them down below in the comment section. Please leave a suggestion. I'd love to see what you guys want to see. And of course, if you leave a suggestion, you're probably going to want to subscribe to see whether I actually ever do make it. So it all works nice in hand. And the last thing. If you would like to make any more city-related builds, this world is getting bigger and bigger. Check out the card system and the description below, and even the top of the comment section too. I'll leave a pinned playlist so that you can make all sorts of fast food and other related buildings for your city. Your city will look so, so, so colorful. I'm just going to rattle them off quickly. We have Subway, Starbucks, KFC, Burger King, Pizza Hut a regular cafe, we have McDonald's, we have a music shop, we have Taco Bell, we have a modern butcher's, we have Wendy's, we have Domino's Pizza, we have a modern bakery, and last but not least, we now have a chick 
fillet. What more could you want to add to your city, ladies and gentlemen? We have so many builds for you. That's in the card system, description below, and of course at the top of the comments. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate all of you so, so, so much. I really, really do. I love all of you that have been contributing to the series so much in both your likes, your subscriptions, and your suggestions. It's been so much fun making this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye!